Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. The next two weeks, I welcome artists who will be featured during Juntos PDX, a five-week-long Hispanic Latino Heritage Month celebration in Portland, Oregon, running from Saturday, September 17th through Saturday, October 15th, 2022. So what is Juntos PDX, why is it important, and why should an entrepreneur care? Junto, without the S, is a political group or a faction, especially in the 17th and 18th century Britain. It is an alternative formation of junta, because English believed Spanish nouns sounded more popular if they ended in an O. Juntos, the plural version, changes the definition to mean together, combined, or jointly. It is a word that includes all diversities into one group, simply being together, and that is why Juntos PDX is important. Juntos PDX is a festival created to connect, inform, and celebrate Latinx Hispanic cultures. So, how does this all work? The first weekend will highlight the top of the line artists, including the next guest. The artist's exhibit aims to bring Latinx artists to the front and center. From a fascinating Latino who will be displaying a brilliant vintage Latinx t-shirt collection full of icons and rich history to a Latino collector with a track record of having one of the most diverse and rarest t-shirt collections in Portland. We have another young, talented Latina with a powerful art style that leaves audience in awe. Additionally, there will be a talented artist bringing a magnificent, versatile, and captivating 3D style art that will shock you. If cutting small pieces of paper wasn't hard enough, this Latina artist pushes paper cutting art to another level. Also featured will be an astonishing Latino artist with a unique oil painting skill that leaves the audience wondering, was it real or was it fake? The second weekend is a panel of powerful storytellers from various industries. From doctors at Oregon Health and Science University to footwear designers from Brooks Running, there are entrepreneurs, directors, and data managers to designers. And the best part, I get to interview every single one of them and put together a podcast episode. The third weekend, it is time to get down. And what I mean by that is the Latinx music and dance weekend. We're calling it the Baya and the Calle, which translates to dancing in the street. And yes, I will be shaking my groove things, but I still am not dancing on TikTok. But if you are out at the event and capture me shaking my given talents and post it on social media, I will send you a free The Shades of E t-shirt. Make sure to tag at The Shades of E and, and at Juntos PDX. Weekend 4 is time to give back to the entrepreneurs whose backs our economy was built on with an artisan flea market. I'm talking artwork, goods, crafts, so many entrepreneurs. The last weekend, Weekend 5, is our closing ceremony. It'll be a day of activities and other surprises. Listen, folks, this is something the Hispanic Latinx community has been working towards for many years. When I helped create the Oregon Health and Science University Hispanic Latinx Employee Resource Group back in 2009, an event like this was the ultimate goal. An event that showcases and encompasses the diversity of all Latin Americans. That means Puerto Ricans, El Salvadorians, Mexicans, Cubans. This means the Afro-Latinx community. This means the Asian Latinx community. This means the pale skin, redheaded, and all other communities. This means all of us, together, sharing our heritage, culture, and stories with each other. This is our foundation of our community, our global community of entrepreneurs. Todos nosotros juntos. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest is a Mexican-American artist who portrays what surrounds him. The modern and fleeting daily life. With his neo-iconism style and layer technique with flat colors, he is the world host. Please welcome Gasilis Oliver. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. 
Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with a very special someone because this is an individual I've actually met in person. We're actually going to be collaborating together. This individual is going to be at Juntos. So if you actually listen to the Juntos episode, Oliver, what's going on, bro? How are we doing? How are you doing? Hi. First of all, thank you for inviting me, for being part of this. And, well, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. And so so you're an artist. So you... You create, you know, actual paintings. But before we get into all of that, introduce the world to you. Who are you? Give us some backgrounds. Where are you from? Uh, I was born in in this city called Guadalajara. It is in the Mexican Western. Um, I was born there, and my my parents they are my mom. She's from Guadalajara, and my dad. He's a Chicano. He is from uh, Santa Monica in Los Angeles. So since I was little, I've been like having these both cultures involved in, in my life, coming back and forth from Mexico to the States, um, having also this dual citizenship and and yeah, since since a little, I've been like like involved in those two cultures. Also, like to give you more background about about me, um, I started with the Jesuits when I was little, also, and I had this, I would say, big opportunity to have contact with their way to teach people uh, to give education and I mentioned this because I really think this is something that shaped my life uh, and yeah because later on I got a really good scholarship to keep on studying with them in the in the college at the university there in Mexico and with all of this open doors, I had also the opportunity to study abroad in Belgium. And this is like the path that was opening the doors in my mind, at least, for realizing that what I wanted to do, it was what I'm, what I'm doing now, art. So what, what you, you mentioned, you know, you're, you're kind of teaching. What were you teaching? Uh, I was teaching. I, I have had the opportunity to, to teach in, in college degree, um, art, art courses, um, painting courses, uh, yeah, acrylics, um, oil, uh, diverse techniques so what what you know throughout your travels you mentioned you've gone to berlin la mexico all these different locations what throughout your travel kind of inspired you to get into art uh whew. they have inspired me a lot um those were just a few uh i've been really into more places um and i don't know all of the travels always um give us a, a, a different um shade of reality of reality uh, you can see you can see what's going on in other places uh but only if you if you travel with a different mindset as a common tourist and if you are um, experimenting more um, daily life situations, so basically what I display in my art is that like daily life situations. So um, it has shaped me a lot, uh, not only also because of knowing people and also knowing different art styles and art possibilities 
that we sometimes cannot see uh, if we stay in the same place. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, creating diversity and getting out there and getting experience allows you to kind of see things quite differently. You know, you mentioned, in fact, there are different forms of art. What would you consider uh, is your form of art? My form of art, uh, I always say, to open a parenthesis, I always say that I'm doing whatever that comes to my mind. And that thing that comes to my mind right now is art. And it's more in the shape of murals and paintings. Right now, it's falling in that. And maybe later, it's going to fall in other shapes. But yeah, what brought me here are the murals. <laughs> so what, what, what do you draw on your murals? You mentioned, you know, you kind of get inspiration from whatever your thoughts are. You get inspiration from your travels, but then you kind of draw whatever you think. But what is it that you're thinking? Let, give, me, give us a, a kind of a generalization of what, what these pieces might look like. More for my background, um, my dad, he's an artist, he's a photographer, and also some of my dad's family members are also artists. And, and since I was a little, I got contact to art uh, as something natural, like a way to play, a way to... Mm, just know the world through through that through the art and I remember when my dad used to go to take pictures his his pictures depict uh, some of the Mexican day life um, some of the realities of poverty um, really raw things and also some beauties of the traditions uh, the culture and i remember that i used to to go with him i don't know maybe right after school he wanted to go to take some pictures and i was with him uh, and that was like the way that i spent it, like that i spent a uh, some of my days just uh, being next to my dad, uh, looking at him, taking pictures, and also looking at that reality in first person, looking at those uh, realities, looking at those pictures um, in, in person. So I didn't realize that since I was... Yeah, until I was, um, I don't know, I, I don't want to put a number, but since I was like more into art, since I was an adult, and I started on painting that, I started on putting those images in my murals, those images that I already have done, and I also consider part of my life and consider part of, yeah, like an essential part of me. So some of those scenes that I like to put on murals are those pictures that, met, that, that my dad uh, took when I was little. Now, how, how one, how big are these murals and how long does it take you to uh, create them? Well, it depends. It depends. Some, some murals are really small. Um, but also some others are really big. I have had the opportunity to to be involved in in small and as well big murals. Um, I don't know to put a number. I would say it in meters because uh, the other measure. Uh, <laughs> I I, ha, I I don't manage it very well, but in meters, <laughs> in meters, uh, it will be the biggest. Um, I would say like fifty per twenty wow. meters. 
um, those those heights are the ones that when you are up in the lift, uh, your legs your legs are shaking. So <laughs> sometimes it is really hard. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's really hard to do a mural. Uh, not only because of trying to put the image or the design you are you're willing to to put in the wall it's more because of how you do it and how you uh, transpose the art to something more physical i've always said that the inner mural it's really physical you have to be also really creative to solve uh, problems in the moment and well uh, the time that it takes to do a mural depends, of course, in the shape of the mural and also the size of the mural and also the complexity of the design. So it is, uh, it really depends because the, I could say that I spent, um, yeah, indeed, I spent two weeks doing my biggest mural wow. and also spent two weeks doing my smallest mural <laughs> so, interesting yeah that's interesting and and it's like a really um overview of how, how it is yeah yeah that totally makes sense you know the complexity it may doesn't matter how big or small it is if it's complex it's going to be going to be difficult now you mentioned, you know, creating problems or, or, or solving problems. Can you kind of, uh, what are some of the problems that you run into as a painter when you're painting and then that you have to try to solve? Yeah, well, uh, to make it easy and to start with this, like, anal um, analogy, when you, when you do a painting or when you want to do a design, for example, in a paper, you just have to transpose it from your mind to that paper. You just, just have to pass it uh, into those two uh, parables. Okay. But when we are trying to do something in the wall, it's going to happen more things, more things, some things that you can imagine and some other things that you could never imagine. Uh, first, the wall. Sometimes the wall, it's not flat. Sometimes mm, yeah. wall has their own shapes, their own uh, um, their own things, their own um, also their own um, textures, yeah. their own yeah many things. So that's one of those things. The second one that's that is that mostly all of the time. It's in public spaces, and public spaces are in movement. There's people always walking around. There are cars. There, there is noise. There is uh, the elements. There's wind. Uh, there's, there's many things happening when you're doing a mural. That is like the second thing, and those are the things that you cannot control. Yeah. Uh, the people that is in there and the people that surrounds her. And so and that second thing, it's one of the beauties of, of doing a mural. Uh, the third thing I would say is um, your logistic for doing a mural. You always have to plan it very well. You always have to, um, to know how you are going to do it before doing it uh, this just with the, with the purpose of finishing it and, and time because always 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 there's a timeline and there's a there's uh, there's an, well always when you work with someone uh, when you are commissioned to do a mural you you have to finish it in you have to finish it by time, so you have to plan it very well. And here is when it comes th that third problem, if I can say it like that, because always 
happens something that puts you out of that logistic. Gotcha. Yeah. Always comes something that everything that you planted disappeared and you have to solve it in different ways. So, um, yeah, you have to have this uh, ability, this skills to solve those problems and, and try to match your logistic, your way to do things with with the universe thing way to do things so those are the mo most basic problems you can like face when you're doing a mural but of course there's there's many other things that may uh, come up when you're doing a mural now, what would you say, um, what piece that you've created are you most proud of? <laughs> uh, I think I have one, and that piece uh, doesn't exist anymore. It was in Guadalajara. Uh, maybe it was the first uh, piece in Guadalajara that when I finished it, I was proud of it. And not only because it was big, but also because of what I intended to show, to depict, and to share through that artwork to, to my people. So this piece, I call it uh, Entre Aguilas y Sopilotes, Danza a la Nación, that it will be translated to in between eagles and vultures, uh, dance to the nation. Uh, it was uh, an image of those uh, danzantes, those like indigenous, uh, yeah, dancers that they used to, they still used to practice it when it's like a religious um, celebration. Uh, they used to dance with those indigenous clothes, uh, with those cascabeles sounding in, in their legs. And it's something really common. And, and they are, I don't know, dancing for something. In this case, specifically, um, they're dancing for religious events. But the thing is that I wanted to depict um, not only this this um, this tradition, but also make an analogy to to what we are as Mexicans, as 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 a country, and try to open that. Uh, possibility, I guess, to say that maybe we are not eagles, maybe we are vultures. Mm, maybe, nice. Yeah, maybe we are both. Maybe we are just eagles. We don't know, but that's the dance. That's the dance that we are in between those animals, that they both have their own uh, good and bad things but that's a possibility that maybe we are not just eagles and we are also vultures that's great that's a great piece i really like that now what did you charge for have you do you charge for your mules do you do you get a compensation or how does that go yeah um well you know i have to pay the bills <laughs> yep yeah as as all the people so i do i do i do charge for doing murals um but also sometimes i don't um it depends on on what on what i want to show and what's the 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 purpose of that mural uh all of the commissions i i charge for them 
commission. So yeah, there's no option to not charge in for that. Uh, but things that I do by myself or things that I do along with projects that I really like and they are nonprofit projects, uh, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just ask for my uh, food or transportation or things like that. And also what I like to do as well is um, applying for grants because this allows you to, or this allow me to, to be paid in a certain way, but also have that um, open possibility of, or of doing not a commission, doing something more uh, free, mm -hmm. yeah, to, and 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 see it as a as a gift to the people. Yeah. while I'm paid. Yeah, and I, I envision, you know, getting a grant like that too allows you the freedom to be creative and kind of do your own design versus the commission right. where you're kind of, you know, segregated to saying, okay, this is what I want. Here's the commission for it. Paint me this, right? So you can exactly. kind of be a little bit more. That's that's pretty amazing. Now, you kind of talked about some of the difficulties of, of doing the murals, right? The logistics of it and the, the elements of the earth and things of that nature. What's easy about doing a mural? Um, I would say nothing is easy. <laughs> well, yeah, Not a and nice also, thing. <laughs> also, while while listening to you, I just realized that I only told you like the uh, how can I say it like the scene things but there's also some things that are not seen that you cannot see and those are the things that always shape the projects mm. that always put the projects going on and those are the things that uh, mostly all of the people never know that that happened for example logistics sending emails uh, looking for grants yeah uh, um, yeah, trying to apply uh, for projects, uh, presenting those projects to to people to be supported, to be sponsored, to to Good whatever. Point. No, so there's many, many, many things behind a mural. Yeah, uh, the the ones, the problems that I told you are just the ones that you face when you are in the process of doing a mural when you have that green light for doing that mural. Yeah. But there's a, there, there are many, many things behind, behind that. Um, focusing more now into, into your question. Can, can you, can you repeat it again, please? What has been easy? Mm-hmm. Nothing is easy. Nothing is easy. <laughs> and, I say this because if if we see that something is easy, it's not because it's easy. It's because there's many work behind that. There's many, many, many things behind that to make it look easy. Yeah, uh, because I was I was really thinking in that yesterday um, because I really thought uh, but I but I I set up and, and gave me time to think of that and I fell down in in the in the answer that no, it's not that it is easy. It's because I've been doing it and I've been practicing and I've been studying and I've been doing many things for making that look easy. So I would say that nothing is easy. Um, 
it has always many things behind and yeah there's there's a lot of work behind all of behind all of the processes yeah you know and i think i think that's true about being an entrepreneur right just as being your own business owner and, and leader there's so many things that they're behind the scenes that people don't see right the emails the late at nights not watching the netflix you know one of the things i think you're doing right now you mentioned um is these behind the scenes things. So one of the things you're doing behind the scenes is you're actually working with Juntos PDX, right? The Hispanic Heritage yeah. Month uh, event that's going to be taking place. Love to hear a little bit more about that. Um, what are you going to be doing at Juntos PDX? Give me a little background of, of what you're planning to do. And I believe there's there's some art that you're planning to display. Now, will you have also, will you have any art on sale? Uh, well, basically, I will be doing a mural. A mural that will show... Yeah, the manly purpose of Juntos, that is, show that Juntos word, yes. that all together word. Um, so yeah, I, I will be doing uh, during um, a weekend, a mural uh, that I will be planning since, well, I have been planning it since like a week ago. So, um, yeah, basically, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, in terms of displaying my art, uh, I don't know if this time I will be displaying something, but the mural, it's, it's going to be there. Perfect. Perfect. That is, I'm, I'm excited to see what you have there. Now, what, what motivates you? You know, you talked about your traveling, but what continues to motivate you to keep you going? Uh. To keep me going on travels or keep me going in art in general? Art in general. Okay. Um, oh, I, don't, I don't know if that happens to you, but I'm a person that I have a lot of ideas in my mind. I have a lot of things to do in my mind. I have a lot of... Um, projects that I want to do I have a lot of paintings that I want to paint I have a lot of murals that I want to to execute so I think those are the things that motivates me the most to to give a legacy to give a uh, to give something something to the people something to the people because what I do, I also really think that touches people. And it's not because I want to to be above any others and 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 have that word. It's because I have seen it while doing murals. Um I have had the contact with the people and I have seen that people likes what I do. People yeah. are really, are really uh, happy. They really enjoy the things that I do. And that's one of those things that also motivates me um, to keep on having that opportunity to share with the people and, and to uh, make those feelings appear in them. Nice. Well, what what's what's uh, some advice you would give some of the listeners, either artists or folks that are thinking of becoming just, you know, entrepreneurs themselves? Yeah, well, whew. there are many that I will give, but I think one of the most important things is being creative, being creative, not only in the product or not only. Uh, in the thing that you want to to give uh, be creative also in the processes be creative also in trying to find in the ways for make it happen to make it real uh, being creative um, for shaping your life in order to accomplish those uh, goals uh, being creative yeah, I think that's the main the main uh, advice I would give, and that create creativity 
it's not an inherent thing that humans are born with. Uh, it's something that you can train. It's something that you can uh, develop. Uh, so don't be afraid of being creative. Nice. Now, for the listeners at home, how can they find your art? How, where can you find him online? Where can they find you? Are you in stores? Where can they see your art? Yeah, well, indeed, there's, they can find it in many places here in Portland. Uh, they can find it at different stores. If, if you go through my Instagram, Casillas underscore Oliver, you could find uh, my artwork. You can send me a DM over there and I can, I can direct you to the places that I'm displaying my art in here. Or also, <laughs> if you Google my name, if you Google Casillas Oliver Muralista or Oliver Casillas Muralista, you will find something also. In fact, folks, I will make sure that on the news letter, there's going to be a, I, I actually watched one of Oliver's um, YouTube's videos of him actually doing one of the murals. It's dope. It's the coolest thing you're going to ever watch. I'm telling you, I'll make sure that's on the newsletter and make sure that folks have it. Oliver, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming on the show, talking about your art, talking about your murals. I'm excited to what to see what you draw for Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm excited. I will also be at Juntos. For those that are interested, again, Juntos is going to be starting September 17th, and it's going to run to about October 15th for Hispanic Heritage Month. It is going to be a five-part series down in Portland at Chinatown. So we hope to see you all there. And please, again, follow the Shades of Entrepreneurship at the Shades of E on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. Yes, I do TikTok folks go go and follow me on the tiktok other than that thank you and have a great night thank you for tuning in to the shades of entrepreneurship for more information please follow the shades of e on twitter instagram facebook or visit the shades of e.com